Hello and welcome to this film which is all about another type of chromatography called HPLC and as I said at the start of the TLC film hopefully by now you know in general terms how chromatography works really all this film is about is about kind of showing you in a small amount of detail how high performance liquid chromatography works in other words how we set up the, the, the physical equipment used to do this experiment okay and also we'll know what retention time is Okay, so let's have a look at what column chromatography is. Now you might think, well, why should we do that? We're watching a film about HPLC. Well, basically, HPLC is like fancy column chromatography. Now, in column chromatography, what you do is you take your mixture and you put it in the top of a tube that has lots and lots of little beads in it, basically, and you keep adding solvent. And the solvent gradually drips through this... Um, this matrix as it's called of little beads and as it does that it takes part of the mixture with it now as we know right the mixture will spend some time adsorbed onto the stationary phase and it will spend some of the time desorbed that is to say it will be traveling along in the mobile phase and the better it is at forming intermolecular forces with the mobile phase the further it will travel so we would think that the yellow component in this mixture has formed stronger forces with the mobile phase than it has with the stationary phase but again these are all fairly general things that we should understand by now the reason i'm showing you this is just to show that column chromatography involves a solvent that instead of rising up a paper now or up a thin layer just goes down through this tube of very very small granules and then ends up coming out the bottom Okay, now HPLC or high performance liquid chromatography hasn't really changed very much. And here's a HPLC apparatus, and you might think, well, that's nothing like the little tube you just showed me. Well, basically, in this machine, we've got a tube just like that one, except it's got tiny, tiny, tiny particles inside its matrix which means that it's quite hard for the liquid to travel through it so it has to be pumped through it so really the only difference in essence between column chromatography and HPLC is that we pump the liquid and the solvent that is we pump the solvent through this matrix past the stationary phase and and we by doing that we allow the mixture to be separated more efficiently and more quickly than we would if we were, if we were doing column chromatography what is the stationary phase? Well, as we've been talking about, there's lots and lots of little beads. This is basically a picture of column chromatography, but I couldn't find any pictures of the insides of an HPLC machine. So we've got lots of little beads here. Okay, The stationary phase is what these beads are. They don't go anywhere. The mobile phase comes along. Okay, So the solvent's coming along here. It's dissolving these green and blue particles, so they're spending some time dissolved in the mobile phase, sometimes adsorbed onto these beads, and whichever one they form stronger intermolecular forces with, they'll spend longer with. So the green ones have formed stronger forces to the beads than they have than the blue ones did, or the blue ones have formed stronger forces with the solvent than the green ones did, and so the blue ones move through faster. Okay, what's the mobile phase? Well, hopefully you can probably figure that out for yourself now. It's the solvent that is carrying the particles through this stationary phase. And in this particular case, the solvent is a liquid, and so that's one of the reasons why we call this high-performance liquid chromatography. Okay, what's retention time? Well, the amount of time that your substance, your component of your mixture, takes to get from the start of your column because they're still called columns in here from the start of the column to the end is called the retention time and it should be the same for any particular substance however it's affected by all sorts of things like the size of the beads the temperature the temperature inside your machine um, the solvent that you're using so once again the conditions that we use are crucial here if we don't have the same conditions inside two different machines then really the retention time is not of a lot of use to us Okay, but if we know that we're always doing HPLC under the same conditions, then we should be able to identify a substance if we know what conditions we used based on its retention time. Okay, so once again, you 
might be wondering a little bit about what materials are actually used for the mobile and stationary phases, but that's okay, it's not that important. You hopefully you've got a general idea of how high performance liquid chromatography works. And if someone said to you that, for example, the blue part of that mixture that you just saw came out later than the green part, then you'd be able to say whether it had formed stronger forces with the um, mobile phase or the stationary phase and whether those and, and compare the forces that were made between the green and the blue. Okay? And once again, rather like with RF, if someone gave you a table of retention times and asked you to look up the retention time that you had, then you'd be able to compare and go, oh, well, my substance is probably that one there because it's got the same retention time. Okay, hopefully it makes sense. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to come and see me or to post something on YouTube.